Hi. Today we're going to be looking at the Bradley and Hitch's me working memory model, which is, as you can see, split into five sections. You've got your central executive, your visual spatial scratch pad, episodic buffer, phonological loop, and then it all gets encoded into your long-term memory. So we'll start with the central executive. The central executive, the central executive controls attention. It also controls the subsidiary slave system. These are the visual spatial scratch pad, your episodic buffer, and the phonological loop. It has limited storage capacity, so it can only attain a limited number of things at any one time. <laughs> the visual spatial scratch pad. It's about your inner eye, which stores visual and spatial information, information and has limited capacity. Limits to two systems are independent. For an example, when you're buying a new coat, visualising what it would look like on you. Now we move on to the phonological loop, which is all about your hearing. The phonological loop stores a limited number of speech-based sounds, so in brief periods of, of consistent of two components, the phonological store, the inner ear, and the articulatory control system. Now we go on to phonological store, more on your inner ear. Phonological store, your inner ear. It is one part of the phonological loop and allows exact acoustically encoded items to be stored for a short period of time, which is about two seconds. Now onto the articulatory control system. The articulatory control system is an inner voice allowing sub-vocal sub repetition of the acoustically coded items stored in the phonological star. So it means still being to hear other things whilst thinking about something else. Multitasking. We now have your episod episodic buffer. This was added to the working memory model by Bradley more recently, in the year 2000. It is where you take information from long-term memory and then combine it with the visuospatial scratch pad and the phonological loop. You can then visualise it and say it's with your inner voice to create a new image. An example to help understand this is to imagine you're an elephant playing ice hockey. We can use our existing knowledge of an elephant and ice hockey. The episodic buffer basically allows us to combine what we already have in our long-term memory, then require to multiply it, ma manipulate it into a new scenario. Long-term memory. Long-term memory stores all our memories and knowledge. It consistently revises and modifies stored knowledge in the light of new information. Its capacity is unlimited. Its duration is also for a lifetime. In this system, information is encoded semantically. It is a star of a model where information can be accessed when needed. But does this work? <laughs> no. Word length effect. The longer the word is, the more syllables there are to remember. So if a list of five words of one syllable would be easier to remember than a list of five words with five syllables, this was tested by Bradley et al. They stated that p people, participants, recalled considerably more of the short words than the long words, and they could recall as many words as they could articulate in about two seconds. In evaluation, Bradley and Hitches, also Bradley et al., experiment amplifies the working memory model. Participants were asked to imagine the block letter F, and then at the bottom, and then stay at the bottom left-hand corner. They were asked to describe each corner as a yes if it included the bottom and the top corners, and the letter and the word no if it didn't. The participants found it it very hard to track a spot of light like that at the same time as explaining the letter. This suggests that the tracking and letters imaginary tasks were complementary for the limited resources of the visual spatial scratch pad, making it hard to remember. I've been Kyle Aylesby and that was a working memory model. Thank you.